The earth was dark through misapprehension of God, that the gloomy shadows might be lightened, that the world might be brought back to God. Satan's deceptive power was to be broken. This could not be done by force. The exercise of force is contrary to the principles of God's government. He desires only the service of love, and love cannot be commanded. It cannot be won by force or authority. Only by love is love awakened. To know God is to love Him. His character must be manifested in contrast to the character of Satan. This work only one being in all the universe could do. Only he who knew the height and depth of the love of God could make it known. Upon the world's dark night, the Son of Righteousness must rise with healing in his wings. continuing our series, The Knowledge of God in Christ, and uh, in this great controversy, we are looking at how God deals with sin and sinner, receiving a revelation of the character of God as demonstrated in Jesus Christ. We had seen in our last study that it is the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, which is shining in the face of Jesus that will build the whole world through his instruments. We are continuing in that same groove this afternoon. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you very much again for this opportunity that we can continue to study your word. Without this revelation of your character, you will be unable to perfect a people in preparation for your second coming. We know that there are many truths in the world today. But what your people need is present truth, the truth that is relevant for their generation, not now to prepare them for resurrection, but this is a truth that will prepare people for translation, to see you face to face, so that when you come, they will say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Our prayer is that we will be a part of that people and therefore, we thank you for showing us this wonderful message, the message of your character. In Jesus' name, amen. Our last text that we had looked at was Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 through 3. And the prophet says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. Because it is the glory of the Lord that is risen upon thee, the glory of the Lord. And uh, we will look a little bit at that glory as it is in Christ. The book Desire of Ages is a very special book to me. I love that book. And I believe it is one of the most inspired books that we can find after the Bible. In verse 20, in chapter 22, I beg your pardon, page 22, it says, the earth was dark through misapprehension of God. And this is just springing from Isaiah chapter 60. Darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. We are told in Christ's Object Lessons, page 415, it is the darkness of of misapprehension of God that is enshrouding the world. So if the word tells us that it is misunderstanding, misapprehension of God that is enshrouding the world, the question is, do we have the correct understanding of God? The statement continues to say, men 
and that will include women also, are losing their knowledge of his character. It has been misunderstood and misinterpreted. So we are being told here that the character of God has been misunderstood. The character of God has been misinterpreted and it can only be done so by those who claim to be the people of God. Because it is those who claim to be Christians, followers of Christ, that are misrepresenting the character of God. That's why he says, Paul says it this way in Romans chapter 2, verse 24. My name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. That is why the statement continues to say, Christ Object Lessons, page 415. At this time, in our day, in our generation, in our era, a message from God is to be proclaimed. A message illuminating in its influence and saving in its power. This message is a powerful message. This message can transform lives into the image of God. That is why the statement says, His character is to be made known. Into the darkness of the world is to be shed the light of his glory, the light of his goodness, the light of his mercy, the light of his truth. This is the work outlined by the prophet Isaiah in the words, O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, say, be, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arms shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. What is the message that must be given to the world today? That message is, Behold your God. The correct understanding of the character of God. His character is to be made known. But even more, the statement continues by saying, those who wait for the bridegroom's coming are to say to the people, behold your God. The last rays of merciful light, the last message of mercy to be given to the world is a revelation of his character of love. I like that. If it is the last message of mercy, it therefore means that no other message will come after it. It therefore means that it is the message that must be proclaimed now. And those who do not have the message of God's character, the right understanding of the character of God, they cannot give the last message of mercy to the world. They do not have the message that will proclaim to the cities of Judah, Behold your God, and therefore they do not have a message to prepare a people for translation. There are many churches today who preach truth. And you can find an element of truth in every church you go to. And that truth will prepare people to see God through resurrection. But this message is so peculiar in its power. It so transforms people into the image of Christ that we are told in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3, that we will see him as he is because we will be like him. That is what the power of this message does. The last rays of merciful light. The last message to be given to the world is the revelation of his character of love. Some, some people believe that the last message is a prophecy of uh, 
the 25, 20 days on the Millerite chart, 1843 Millerite chart. That is not the last message of mercy. That is not a message that will prepare a people for the coming of the Lord. The last message is the revelation of his character, is the correct understanding of who he is, is to show to the world that our God is a God of mercy, a God of love, a God of compassion, and he is a God of justice. Yes, but what is his justice? His justice is that he can never force a person to be saved who wants to die. That's his justice. He cannot force a person into going in a direction who wants to go another direction. His justice is that those who choose life, he cannot permit them to die. That is his justice. For well, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. That is the justice of God. The children of God, as the statement continues, are to manifest his glory is their own life and character. They are to reveal what the grace of God has done for them. That is how the last message will be preached to the world. Jesus, as a matter of fact, says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. The end can only come when the gospel is translated from a theory in our minds to an experience in our characters. The gospel, the end will only come when the gospel is translated within us in such a way that we behave just like God. Now when people see us, they're not seeing man, but they're seeing God. The gospel, when it is preached as a witness, is a revelation in the life of God's people, of every attribute of God's character. Nothing will be missed. We will be like him in character. One day I was walking the beach of Fall Bay in Barbados. A beach that I love. I, I go down to that beach and meditate. Secluded. In the quietness. And I hear the roaring of the waves. And the rush of the wind through the trees. And enjoy the white sandy beach. And as I was walking that beach, it was early in the morning. And the sun had not yet arisen over the horizon. And I was, as I was walking, my mind was taken in with the love and the glory of the Lord. Because I love to walk and meditate. And pray and talk and have a wonderful fellowship with the Lord. And I was, as I was walking, something caught my eye to the right. Just over the horizon, there was a small beam of light. It was the sun now peeping its way up into our sky. And I stood there and I marveled at that sun. And I watched that sun and it, as it was rising. And I watched that sun, and I was, you know, very happy to be able to behold the sun with my naked eye. It may not have been a wise thing to do. Because when I caught myself and I looked away, everything around me was total darkness. And all that I saw was the image of the sun in my vision. That taught me a very important lesson. The lesson is that the glory of the Lord 
is concentrated in Jesus Christ. And when we behold him and gaze at him and stare at him and enjoy the sight, it's very difficult to rip our eyes from that sight. But if for any reason we turn to the left, we are only going to see the sun. And if we turn to the right, we are only going to see the sun. Because once we gaze at the Son of God, He will so fill our vision that everything around us will be darkness. We will not see the faults of others. We will not see our faults. We will only see the matchless charms of Jesus Christ. I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed the impact. Christ is the glory of God. So when Moses said, show me your glory, what was he asking for? Give me a vision of Jesus Christ. And when you come to God, show me your glory. God will say, look at my son. When you say, Lord, show me what you are like, he will say, this is my son. Hear ye him. Because he is all that I am like. And when we behold Christ, Reminds me of the time when Christ was walking with his disciples. And his disciples, they enjoyed his presence. They loved to be in his presence. They enjoyed talking with him and praying to him and walking with him and sleeping with him and eating with him. They enjoyed him continually. One day they said, okay, Jesus, show me the Father. And Jesus said, Philip, have I been so long with you and yet you've not known me he that have seen me have seen the father i came into the world for a purpose philip that purpose is to reveal the father because i am the revelation of the father but where is jesus at this time where is he we are told that he died and he rose again and he has now ascended and he is at the right hand of the throne of God. We are told that he is there interceding for his people. But he has also told us, if I go, I will send another comforter. That is, I will not leave you. I am the light of the world, yes. But now that I am in heaven, I have left you into the world that you now can be the light of the world. Not that you have light to shine in yourselves, but I am your light. I am your light. And therefore, the world is saying, where is Jesus? What is he like? I've never seen Jesus. Yes, I heard that he's a man that lived 2,000 years ago. But where is he? Have I been so long time with you, and yet you have not known me? He that have seen me have seen Jesus. Jesus wants for that word that he spoke concerning himself in relation to his father, be filling the mouths of his people who are not hypocrites, but are truly manifesting Christ. Paul says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, it is not me, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If you are looking at me and you are seeing me, that means that I am alive and you are seeing sin. But I am dead and Christ is alive. Therefore Christ is still the light of the world, but I am the vehicle through which he lights the world. I am the candlestick through whom he can shed his light to the world. His character, his glory. So as Jesus is the glory of God, you are the glory of Jesus. Profound. As Jesus is the glory of God, you are the glory of Jesus. Where 
And Paul made a, a very wonderful illustration in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. He says, Christ is the glory of the Father. The woman is the glory of the man. But he's not speaking in reference merely to human relationships. He says, this is a great mystery in Ephesians chapter 5. But it's speaking in reference to Christ and his church. The church is the glory of Jesus Christ. It is through the church that not only people in the world, but we are told in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10, that unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Imagine that. Our high calling that God has selected sinful mortals who have gone aboard with Satan to be the recipients of his grace and the effulgence of his glory. Because it is only through this fallen race that God has been able to manifest the depth of love that he has for all of his creatures. We are Christ's glory. Christ says in John chapter 8 verse 12, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Remember Isaiah chapter 60. Gross darkness should cover the people. But Christ is the light. And as we are following Christ, we then are not walking in that darkness. But we are told that that darkness is misapprehension of the character of God. So we, if we are following Christ, we then will not be walking in a misapprehension or misunderstanding of the character of God. So we have to follow Jesus. So the character of God from Genesis to Revelation must be interpreted through the light streaming from the cross of Calvary to the life and the obedience of Jesus Christ. And therefore, if we seek to understand anything of God's character that has not been revealed in the life of Christ, then we are still walking in darkness. Everything outside of Christ in reference to God's character is darkness that the world believes. So the glory that will fill the whole earth finds its source in the face of Jesus Christ. This glory coming from the face of Jesus, it is considered by Paul as the true gospel. Therefore, the correct understanding of God's character is called the gospel. If you do not have the understanding of God's character as manifested by Christ, you have a gospel without power. It cannot save you from sin and you will die in your sin. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 says, reading through verse 6. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Paul was very bold. Paul said in no uncertain terms, what I'm speaking to you it is the gospel. And if you don't accept, and if you don't believe this gospel that I am preaching to you, you're lost. Wow. You may say that Paul was arrogant. We have to be arrogant for Jesus' sake. We have to be sure. We have to be certain of that which God has given to us. We have to understand that it is the message of salvation. God's character is not one of the messages. It is not one of the doctrines. It is the issue in the great controversy. It is the gospel. He says, but therefore gospel be hid. It is hid to them that are lost. Verse 4 says, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus our Lord, and ourselves your servant, for Jesus' sake. Verse 6, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, where did this light shine from? Out of darkness, have shined in our hearts to give the light 
of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Jesus came into this world of darkness, into this world where there was a misapprehension of the character of God, and he shone forth to the world the correct understanding of God's character, and the darkness could not, hallelujah, put it out, because he stands forever. If we have this message, we cannot fail. It is a certainty. So what was Christ's purpose then for coming to the world? He came to expel the darkness of misapprehension of the character of God. And how did he fulfill his purpose? He glorified his Father on earth by demonstrating to all men the truth of his character. He says in John chapter 17 verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. That means I have revealed to men who you really are. I have shown men your character. I have finished therefore the work which thou givest me to do. He has finished the work. What was that work that was given to him? To glorify the Father. To show to men and to angels who the Father really is. One day, Christ was standing before Pilate and Pilate asked him a question. Pilate asked him, are you a king? I'm hearing that you're a king. Jesus says, you said I'm a king. This is John chapter 18, verse 37. But then he says, to this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world that I shall bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And if Christ had fallen short in any iota of revealing the fullness of the character of God, he would have failed in his mission. Because he came to show the truth. And everything of the truth. John says it a different way. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 8, John says, he that committed sin is of the devil. Is that true? Oh yes, it is true. We like to believe and pamper our minds that we can be living in sin and still of God. <laughs> not so. He that committed sin is not of God. When you are committing sin, you can't serve two masters. You are serving Satan. Jesus says in John chapter 8 verse 34 that he that committed sin is a servant, is a slave of sin. He says, 1 John chapter 3 verse 8, For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Note, Jesus says in John 18 verse 37, that he came to bear witness of the truth. And John says in 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 that Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. That therefore is telling me that Christ came for a purpose. And that purpose is to reveal the truth in relation to the lies that the devil had been telling because he came to destroy the works of the devil. Therefore, to bear witness to the truth is that which destroys the works of the devil. You don't have to try to destroy the works of the devil. The work of the devil is darkness. A misapprehension of God. That is the work of the devil. But if you come into a dark room and you want to destroy the darkness, you just have to turn on the light. And God is saying that in this world of darkness, of a misapprehension of the character of God, he sent his son to turn on the light. And when he turned on that light, 
The darkness had to flee. The darkness could not put it out. A misapprehension of God's character could not override the revelation of the character of God as revealed in Jesus Christ. When Christ died on the cross, he gave the fullest revelation of God's character to the universe and that ripped the mask from Satan and the whole universe said, salvation is come unto heaven. There's nothing that Satan can do against the light that was revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. The works of the devil are all the lies he told about God's government. What are those lies, Zen? When were they told? Jesus dealt with those lies. What are those lies that Satan told? What is it all about? Next time, we're going to go further in looking a little deeper at the issues. Satan has told lies about God's character. Christ came to clear them up. It is understanding the truth of God's character then that will be the very basis of our salvation. Our prayer is that God's people will come to know and understand the truth of his character and not believe the sophistries, the lies of the enemy. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are thankful for the light of the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as shining in the face of Jesus Christ. We are truly thankful that you have not left us in darkness. You have not left us with Satan's lies about you. But you have cleared them all up in Jesus Christ. And we are not going to choose to believe Satan's lies as seen in how he sought to portray you. But we're going to see and receive the truth as portrayed in Jesus Christ. We thank you for this wonderful revelation. We thank you for Christ, the light of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today and desire to study deeper into the subject of who God is, you may obtain a copy of the book, God's Character, The Best News in the Universe, by calling 509-288-2744 or 208-318-6430. Or you can write to us at Truth in Jesus, P.O. Box 152, Farmington, Washington, 99128. If you wish to help the worldwide outreach of Truth in Jesus, your gift may be sent to the same address, or you can give a gift online at truthinjesus.org. Thank you for listening. Thank you.